Hello everyone, welcome to the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. So the video before this one, I posted of my son's testimony of being healed from color blindness. This has been a very big thing in our family and it's grown the faith of many who've heard this story, which is why I wanted to post it for people to see. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, it's um, Alistair's video on experiencing healing of color blindness and I posted it on Sunday. Um, and so today I just wanna talk about that a little bit, just freelance kind of off the cuff thoughts. Um, when Alistair was a baby, we took him to the eye doctor for um, some eye turning in issues. And it was at that time that we learned that he was color deficient and he was experiencing a red green color blindness. When I learned this, I was, really sad as a mom, just because even at two years old, he was showing that he was an artist. Um, he used to draw all the time. Was, his passion was to just sit at his art table, just draw. And so to have an artist in the family and to know that he had color blindness, it just really struck me as rather sad. Um, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people have this problem. And, you know, we learned that you know, we just kind of got over it, dealt with it, and it wasn't a big deal because to him, he didn't know any different. And so he grew up, and um, he's 16 years old now, and I'm not going to retell his testimony because you can watch his testimony, but he was a believer, um, baptized in Christ, following Jesus um, when he was in kindergarten, and he's always been, you know, just very in the Lord and very much had a love for God. And um, I've always appreciated that about him, that he's he's been gifted with many talents in the Lord and art being one of those. And, um, you know, and his testimony was just so beautiful because he ran into a problem in his life where he was having a hard time um, in his heart and not his physical heart, but his emotional heart and the way that he saw people and the way he saw the world. And when he came to the Lord with that issue, he fully surrendered it. Now for him a long time, he, he held on to it or he kind of ignored it or pushed it away. But when he really received his healing, it was when he surrendered completely. Um, and you know where those points are in your life when you look back, when you just decide that you've had enough and that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get free, um, to get that freedom. And when we get to that place, we do experience freedom in Jesus. And for them, for him, he being a believer still found himself in this type of bondage because this, um, this heart you know, issue that he was dealing with had kind of become a stronghold in his life. And he was ready to surrender it all to Jesus. And he came to Jesus with his full feelings. He um, was honest with the Lord. And I think it's important that we do that. You know, we want to be honest with the Lord and he knows what we're thinking anyway. And sometimes we just need to clear the air and just say, Lord, this is how I'm feeling and I'm willing to give you everything of me, all the brokenness, everything I am, just to make you the Lord over everything in my life. And I want to take this brokenness that I have and trust you with it. I want to give it to you and see what you can do with this brokenness. And when we do that, we begin to see the Lord move in amazing ways. So for Alistair, he decided to, um, he prayed by himself first and he prayed with me, you know, his, his mom, we spent some time together in prayer. Um, but then he really wanted to go deeper into pursuing this. And I think that this is where in the Bible we see that, you know, we, we mine for spiritual riches, which, which means we dig into the word for truth. And when we pursue truth in God, um, that's when we start to get to the the meat of what it is that God has for us. And so we have to search it out, you know. So he prayed by himself, but then he kept pressing on and he prayed with me. And then he kept pressing on further and he went for prayer at church um, with the prayer team. And he shared with them just a little bit of what he was going through and what he was wanting prayer for. And he was vague 
in that prayer with them. But the Lord just opened up that moment because um, in that prayer, the Lord gave supernatural words of knowledge to the prayer team and insights that helped them to pray directly into the real issue. And I think a lot of times we come to the Lord and we think we we have a problem and the Lord might say, I, I hear what you're saying here, but really what we need to deal with first is this over here. And when you get that type of spiritual insight, it's like amazing. But of course, God knows everything. So he knows our hearts and he knows exactly where he needs to work in our lives. And so through that prayer, Alistair was able to surrender everything to the Lord and really let go of things that he had been holding on to. And when we hold on to things, it almost feels like, I don't know, there's a sense of control. Like, I just, I can't let go of it. I need to hold on to it. I need to maintain control. But when we finally release that and we just say, I can't do this anymore. This burden is too heavy. I'm giving it all to God and I'm going to be free in Jesus. Amen. Amen to that. And he did experience freedom. And it was such a surprise to everyone in the family because not only did the Lord heal his emotional hurt and release him of all that baggage that he was carrying emotionally, but to our shock and surprise, the Lord had a bonus miracle for him. He was completely healed of his color distortion. Now, immediately in the moment after the prayer, had taken place, he hadn't quite become aware that things were different. Um, The church building was dimly lit. But then as we walked out to the car, uh, we immediately went from church to the grocery store. And it was while we were at the grocery store that he said something, uh, because up until this point, he hadn't spoken about it. And he, he looked at a box of popsicles and he said, what color is that? And I said, that's lime green. And he said, I've never seen that color before. And I looked at him as he was looking around the grocery store and he was just saying how everything was so bright. And I think gradually over the course of like from driving to the church, which was just maybe a mile away from the grocery store, his vision was improving. And by the time we had gotten to the grocery store, he was seeing in full color and He just, I think, couldn't even believe it at the moment. It was just one of those things where you're processing it and you're realizing it and he was looking around and he kept saying, everything is so bright, everything is so bright. And then, and then he was noticing like shades and colors he'd never seen. And, and when we finally kind of realized like he's been fully healed of color blindness, we were just so profoundly like moved by the fact that the Lord did the healing that he came for, which was the healing of his heart, but that God had gone above and beyond and actually restored his vision. You know, you think about the eyes of the heart, um, you know, and we think about how our eyes, you know, we see with the eyes of, of faith and it's like his eyes of faith were opened in that moment because he surrendered to the Lord. And there's so much there, you know, and then when we think about Jesus and his ministry, he was concerned and he was moved by people's physical ailments and he healed many people. But Jesus wasn't just looking at the outward manifestation of illness that people were fighting. He wanted them to be healed in their soul. He wanted them to be made well with their spirit. And so he forgave people of their sins and he also healed them from fever or being lame. Um, many, you know, were raised from the dead. And um, so Jesus is just so good. He's so good to us. And one of the things that Alistair really learned through this is that he learned God's justice by seeing God's mercy. And you think about those Job moments where Job was questioning God and how he, creation and, and how the earth was run and the decisions and things that were happening around him. And the Lord, you know, came back and was reminding Job that God created everything and that the creation obeys his command and word and that the Lord is, he's, he's omniscient and, and he's everywhere and he, he knows and he cares for everything. 
and he is good and god is so good and he's so gracious to us that he extended this mercy to him and the mercy is what ended up humbling him in his heart and you know gave him a deeper understanding of who god is and his goodness god is just he is good he is truth he is light he is love he's all these things and when we surrender our lives to Jesus, it helps us to fully understand um, as much as we can on this world, his love for us and for people. And he wants us to love people. He wants us to reach out and help people. And um, he's given us wonderful scriptures to uphold us and teach us and to guide us. And um, so we are thanking God for this miracle of his vision being restored. But ultimately, what matters the most is that our soul is prospering. You know, the Lord wants our soul to prosper so that we can do all the good works that he has set before us that he has wonderful plans for your life that he wants to use you for and so i want to close with reading hebrews chapter 12 therefore since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us fixing our eyes on jesus the author and perfecter of faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then this next part of scripture talks about the believer and how you know, the discipline of the Lord is a gift to us to keep us on the narrow path and to keep us pursuing him and his righteousness. Verse 3 picks up saying, For consider who, him who endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you endure God. God deals with you with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to him. But he disciplines us for our good, so that we may share his holiness. All discipline, for the moment, seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterward it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak, and the knees that are feeble, and make straight paths for your feet, so that the limb which is lame, may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all men, and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. And there be no immoral or godless person like Esau who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you know that even afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought for it with tears. And so the author begins with this race metaphor, and he wants us to know that when we experience trials in the life of a believer, that we shouldn't let our circumstances get the best of us, that we should endure and let our strength be renewed that we finish well and that at 12 um, verse chapter 12 verse 14 it says pursue sanctification and this explains drawing near to god with full faith and a cleansed conscience a genuine acceptance of christ as your savior accepting his sacrifice of sin bringing the sinner into fellowship with god and to live lives that demonstrate the qualities that God desires, including peace and holiness. 
So believers are to watch their own lives so as to make sure that we are living lives of testimony, of peace and holiness, so that our lives can be a living testimony to those around us. So we want to live lives of good testimony to those around us. We want people to see us and experience Jesus, to know his love and mercy and forgiveness. And as I get to know the Lord more and more every day, as I experience his goodness, I'm just constantly blown away by his care, his concern, and his love and his detail for every situation. I thought about how Alistair was born with this color distortion, and when he was born with it, the Lord knew that he was going to restore that. And it was restored, and it was restored for the glory of God. And God does everything for his glory. And it might not look like it in the short term when we're living a small piece that looks like a very difficult trial in our lives. But when we see the full story, and especially when we're in eternity looking back, we'll see how everything was used for the benefit of our soul and for the kingdom of God. And that's how we want to live our lives, focused on the eternal, focused on refining ourselves, praying to the Lord for that refiner's fire to be in our life, and knowing that as the Lord does um, this discipline, we often think of that word in a negative way, but it really is a positive way. It's, it's, it's the Lord growing us into closer communion with Him. It's drawing us away from worldly ways that lead to consequences and pain and into His holy ways, which lead to blessings. And we can walk in those blessings. And as we walk in those blessings, we become a blessing to others and those around us. And so I hope that that's inspired you and encouraged you the way it has us. Such a beautiful testimony of the Lord and His goodness. And if you haven't seen Alistair's testimony, please go back and watch it. It's so good. I feel like the Holy Spirit was just flowing while he was talking. Um, I was praying, and I'm sure he prayed before he went up on the stage to give that testimony that the Lord would just give him the words, and everything just flowed. And it's a beautiful thing to see the Holy Spirit move um, and just give somebody the words to speak at the right time. And when we walk with the Lord, any one of us are capable of, of having that Holy Spirit flowing of words to those around us. We let our, our mouth be um, you know, given over to the Lord and we can use it for benefiting those around us and helping. So thank you. Have a good one.